So this is a simple hack to get your brain on board with your goals. If you are confused about how to choose your top three goals, then I would recommend brain dumping all the goals on a sheet of paper and then numbering them according to which of these will most positively impact your life if you improved upon them. Hello and welcome to the Brave Marketing Podcast with your host Swapna Thomas. This is the podcast for the renegades, the trailblazing leaders and the change makers who don't just have a business, it's your calling. Those of you who want to make a difference and make money but all on your own terms. I'm on a mission to show as many life coaches as possible how you can have more income, more impact and infinitely more fun by being unapologetically and bravely you and breaking all the rules. I have created 5 figure months with no paid ads, a tiny list and zero complicated sales funnels. Simplifying marketing and teaching you how to use it for good in the world is my zone of genius. With this podcast, I'm here to share weekly episodes on the soul and the strategy of marketing, mindset, money, and everything online business. Let's dive into today's episode. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Brave Marketing Podcast and a very happy new year. This is our first episode of 2023 and... It's also the 25th episode for the podcast. Yes, we are officially a quarter of a century in and what an amazing journey this has been. I cannot wait to keep creating 25 more episodes and celebrate the 50th episode milestone with all of you soon. But meanwhile, I would love to hear what has been your favorite episode till now So drop me a DM on Instagram or email me and let me know. And if you haven't had a favorite yet, I think this episode might just be it. It has been definitely one of my favorite episodes to record. We are talking about 23 questions to ask yourself to reach your goals with ease in 2023. And this is part one because I have so much good stuff for you. And I definitely do not want to overwhelm you. That's not how we do things here. We break down things and we make it simple, right? So that's why I have divided these 23 questions into two episodes. And trust me, you are going to want to listen to both of them. So you might want to listen to this whole episode at one go. Then take notes and then take some time out, an hour or two to actually sit down with these questions and integrate the responses in your 2023 planning. And if you haven't started planning 2023, that's completely okay. You can still start with these questions and build upon them. And if you need any help, DM me, reach out to me. Are you ready to dive in? So let's go. So the number one question I want you to ask yourself is, what are my wins or what am I most proud of of myself in 2022. And when I say wins, big and small, everything counts. Please don't minimize anything. Every single thing that felt like a win for you, even if it was just a tiny thing, it counts. Did you post more than you did in 2021? It counts. Did you grow your audience even just by 100 people or 50 people? Definitely counts. Did you make the same amount of money that you did in 2021? Listen, maintaining or sustaining an income level in a year that broke many businesses is an incredible achievement. So don't discount that. Celebrate that. Also, this isn't just about the money you made. Did you try new things? Did you try uncomfortable things? Did you stretch yourself and your mind? And even if you did not hit your goal, did you stay consistent In showing up and did you master launching one thing? It all counts. Okay, so that's the first question. What are my wins and what am I proud of? The second question is, what are my biggest lessons from the last year? In our rush to start the new year, 
we often forget to integrate the lessons from last year. So make sure you're taking the time to look at what you learned, how you grew, how you changed in the last year and integrate all of that with who you have become. Because it's literally an identity shift, right? One of my mentors used to say that success might make you some money, but failure gives you million dollar lessons. But you have to sit with the discomfort of those failures and really look for those million dollar lessons instead of just looking past them and immediately moving on because failure is uncomfortable, right? So sit with, you know, every single month of last year. What was the lesson that you learned that month? Whether it came from success or whether it came from failure, make sure you're integrating that for the new year. All right, question number three is what worked really well? So this is like an audit of all the offers, launches, strategies, investments that you made last year. Look at what offers sold the most, what offers brought in the most money, what strategies really worked for you, etc. I make a Google spreadsheet of all the offers and then tabulate how much money each offer and each launch brought in. If you're only selling one or two offers, which is a great idea, by the way, then you might want to do this month-wise and look at the marketing and sales strategies you used each month. Similarly, look at any purchases you made or investment in coaching or courses and what worked for you with those. Doing this exercise might give you some surprising information that you had not even considered. Like the offers you thought didn't do that well were the ones that brought the most money in because of the price points. So you might want to work on the launch strategy for that in 2023 and truly master selling it. The next question I want you to ask yourself, number four, is what did not work the way I wanted it to? So just like the previous question, look at the offers, launches, strategies that did not work for you and why. So instead of just blaming yourself or thinking it was bad luck, dig a little deeper. Did you give yourself enough time to plan the launch? Were you in 100% belief behind your offers? Did you do everything that you planned with your coach? Or did you actually implement what you learned in the course you brought? So make sure you are looking at all of these things so that you know why things that did not work happened that way, right? So instead of just simplifying it to, oh, that did not work for me and never trying it again, look at what exactly went wrong and course correct from that. The next question, number five, is what am I leaving behind in the last year? Habits, mindsets, limiting thoughts, that you know don't serve you anymore. They might have worked for you once, but now they have become obstacles. For example, hustling at the last moment, right? It might have created a positive pressure for you to get things done at the last minute, maybe in the past, but now it just ends up draining you and exhausting you. So it might be a good thing for you to leave that in the past. You might need to set up reminders or create external accountability with a peer or a coach for you to actually leave this in 2022 and not keep repeating the same patterns in the new year. Question number six is, what are my top three goals? You can, of course, have more than three goals, but prioritizing three will signal your brain to start giving more importance to the actions, the plans, and the strategies that you need to put in place for these goals. So this is a simple hack to get your brain on board with your goals. Now, your goal can be a money goal. It can be a client goal. It can be an audience growth goal. And of course, life goals. If you are confused about how to choose your top three goals, then I would recommend brain dumping all the goals on a sheet of paper and then numbering them according to which of these will most positively impact your life if you improved upon them, right? So number them, you know, what will make the most impact for you? Is it the money goal? You know, making more money than you made last year or making a certain amount of money, is that going to change your life dramatically? So that might be your number one goal. So do that and then choose the top three. Then question number seven is to ask yourself, why do I want these goals? 
This is an alignment check for your goals. Are the goals you are setting even yours or are they just simply influenced by someone? Because unless you are truly motivated and driven by your goals, you won't go all in for them. Now, for example, you feel that 100k a year is what you're supposed to go for. But what you really crave for is the stability of $5,000 per month. Or maybe you actually want to go for $150,000. But everyone is telling you that since you did not reach your goal last year, you should aim small. Don't do that. Do what you want to do. Go for the goal that really motivates you, that will you know make sure that you keep going even when things get tough, even when it feels like nothing is happening. That goal should be like a beacon for you. It should be like a lighthouse for you that literally motivates you and gets you out of your bed. The only person who can set the right goal for you is you. Okay, now number eight. What beliefs do I want to embody the most this year? What you believe about yourself is how you will always end up acting like. So if you believe that everything you say is gold for your clients, then you will never filter or overthink your content. If you believe that you have to struggle for every little win, then you will end up sabotaging even the easiest way of reaching your goals just to experience the struggle that you think you deserve. So instead of letting these unconscious belief systems just run the show unchecked, choose the beliefs that you want to rewire or cultivate in the new year. Look at the five core areas of your business, maybe mindset, messaging, offers, marketing, and sales, and write down the top two or three beliefs that you know will serve you to reach your goals in 2023 and just change the game for you. The episode number five, which is how to do a belief audit for more clients and more sales will help you do this. So definitely listen to that episode. The ninth question that you should be asking yourself is, who do I want to be more of this year? Once you have your beliefs that you want to practice and master this year, start expanding them to who do you become more of as a result of believing those beliefs. The reason I say more of and not who do I want to become is because you're never starting from zero. For example, if you want to become a badass CEO, then you already are that person. But you need to turn up the volume a little. It's not like you have no CEO-like qualities or you're not badass at all. It's already in you. We just need to turn up the volume a little bit, right? So maybe you want to be more bold in your content. Maybe you want to become a more powerful leader or you just want to be more calm this year. Think of what needs to happen for you to turn up that volume and help you become that person. Tenth question is, how do I want to feel on the way to my goals? So this is about thinking, how do you want to feel on the way to your goals? You can reach 100K or whatever your goal is in a calm, non-hustle, curiosity-driven way while resting and including lots of play in your days. But you can also be mean to yourself, hustle non-stop, Work all hours in a day and get exhausted and burnt out by the time you reach 100K. That's a choice that you need to make. So set clear intentions for how do I want to feel on the way to my goals, right? And finally, the 11th question that I want you to ask yourself is, how will I take care of me this year? Once you know your goals and you know how you want to feel on the way to your goals, you get to choose how you will take care of yourself on this journey. Remember, you are the golden goose of your business. If you are not happy, your business cannot be happy, your clients cannot be happy, and your family cannot be happy. So taking care of yourself needs to be your number one priority. So start deciding what self-care activities you will put in place and then actually schedule them right in your planner. This might include vacations, mini retreats, therapy, days off for pampering yourself or shopping, family and friends time, solo travel, a weekly check-in with your business besties or your life besties, working out, eating well, 
meditation, journaling every day, among others. So decide what are the things or activities that you need to put in place so that you're actually taking care of yourself on the way to your goals. So these are the 11 questions that I want you to ask yourself before you dive into part two. If you've just stumbled upon this episode, there is a part two, so definitely listen to that as well. I hope this was useful. I hope this is going to give you lots of ideas for planning for your next year. And if you feel a little bit lost and you feel like you don't know what you want to do this year, you have goals, but you can't see what strategies to put in place or how to grow your business in 2023, reach out. Let's get you a call. Let's look at what's going right for you, what's not, and how you can actually hit your goals in the most effortless way. That's it from me for this episode. I will see you in the next episode. Until then, stay brave all the way through 2023. That's the episode for today. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I am thrilled to have you as part of the Brave Marketing community. Because this podcast is still brand new, it would mean so much to me if you could leave a five-star review as that will make it easy for other brave hearts to find this podcast and grow our community of rule breakers. Until next time, have a brave week ahead.